Mistress of All Evil, A Tale of the Dark Fairy by Serena Valentino. Copyright, Disney Press, 2017. Chapter 27, The Dark Fairy in Exile. It was several weeks later when the Odd Sisters summoned me to their home. They sent a message with Opal, who must have been visiting them on one of her adventures. They said it was finally time to do the spell, but that it needed to be performed at their home. I never left my castle. Not ever. Not once in all those years. And I was terribly anxious. I was so afraid to use my powers, terrified to even use the simplest of travel charms, I decided to go by foot to where the Out Sisters had placed their house. It was on the outskirts of the kingdom, not very far away at all, but the idea of traveling even such a short distance sent a panic through my entire body. I summoned Diablo, Opal, my other birds. I asked them to fall overhead and watch the sky. The Odd Sisters' letter said that they would have placed their house closer to my castle, but something had prevented them from doing so. They assumed it was some sort of security measure by the previous occupant that was remaining in place. As I walked through the forest, I felt foolish for being so frightened, but then a desperate need to flee came over me. I sensed that I was in actual danger. The overwhelming feeling of hatred was palpable, and it was then that I knew it was the forest. It had come to life. It was a terrible thing to behold. The green green vines twisted their way towards me with a fearsome velocity. The trees, too, were unlike anything I'd ever seen. They seemed to have faces and long grasping hands that were impossible to break free from. I thought I was going to die there as the vines wrapped themselves around me while the trees held me fast in place. My birds swooped down attacking the trees, trying to help me as the thorny vines cut into my flesh and wrapped around my neck. I wasn't frightened, as I felt my life force slipping away. Not really. It almost felt like a relief. I think I might have been happy to die. Maleficent, no! Use your powers! The Odd Sisters screamed through the trees. They stretched their hands toward the sky, turning the world dark with their magic. Maleficent, it's dark! Use your magic! In my panic, my body grew warmer and warmer. I remembered what you told me in my treehouse that afternoon, on the day I first used my travel charm. You said if I ever felt that way again, to just think of somewhere safe, someone I loved, and I'd travel there. That's what I did. Within mere moments, I found myself standing safely on the threshold of the Odd Sisters' house, no longer in the clutches of my enemy. Oh my goodness, Maleficent, are you okay? Lucinda asked. I thought I was. I couldn't tell. I think I was in shock. We should have known. We should have known you would be the enemy of nature after what happened in the fairy lands. We were stupid not to have thought of it. We are so sorry. It made sense. Even without explanation from the Odd Sisters, I was the enemy of nature. It seemed only right after I destroyed the fairy lands. I knew I deserved it. It was my curse. And I feared for my daughter. What if I passed my curse on to her? Oh, no. The trees will not condemn her for your deeds. Not to worry. The Odd Sisters assured me. The inside of the Odd Sisters' house was very different from my own. It was comfortable, warm, and inviting. It reminded me of my years with you in the Fairylands, with its cozy kitchen and large windows. Outside the large, round kitchen window, there was even a tree in which my birds could perch. I wondered why I hadn't accepted their offer to bring me there years ago. We're ready to start the spell, Maleficent. By first... We need to make you aware of the terms, Lucinda said. Ruby took over. The spell only requires the very best parts of you. That way, she will truly be your daughter. And in a way, she will be you. But only the very best parts of you. The old sister smiled at me. We know the spell works, and we promise you no harm will come to you or your daughter. Lucinda took me by the hand. Do you agree to give your daughter the best parts of yourself? Will you let us help you by giving you someone to love? I nodded. Yes, I want it more than anything. Lucinda took a crimson drawstring bag filled with a deep blood-red powder from the pocket in her skirt. She poured the powder, which was speckled with ground obsidian crystals, onto the floor in a circle around me. The sisters stood just within the circle, creating a triangle. Lucinda was the pinnacle, while Ruby and Martha flanked me. 
and their power illuminated their formation with a brilliant silver light. I had absolutely no fear. The ancestors reflected nothing but love and devotion to me. Lucinda began the spell. We call upon the old gods and the new to bring a loving daughter to this fairy, to this witch who is true. And the three sisters repeated the words over and over again. We call upon the old gods and the new to bring a loving daughter to this fairy, to this witch who is true. I felt a violent jolt to my body and a sensation I couldn't explain. At least I couldn't then. I can now because I know now what happened to me. But I will try to describe the sensation as I felt it then. Something was being taken away from me. Honestly, I'm not sure if it was just a strong visceral reaction to the spell, but my body and my soul reacted forcefully. I think it was because I was trying to fight what was happening. Every time the sisters said the words, I was overcome by the same feeling. It was agony. We call upon the old gods and the new to bring a loving daughter to this fairy, to this witch who is true. The sensation became almost unbearable. I felt like screaming. I was losing too much of myself. It was as if I was slipping away and becoming nothing. I felt empty and cold, but the sisters had promised they wouldn't hurt me, and I trusted them. Just when I could no longer take the anguish, when I could no longer take the pain and the horrible ripping of my soul, it ended. It ended, and I thought perhaps I had died, because surely that was what it felt like to be dead. This was what it felt like to no longer exist. But I heard the Out Sisters' voices in the darkness. I heard them calling to me, calling me back from my pain, calling me back from the nothingness. Maleficent, open your eyes! It was Martha's voice. Maleficent, look, it's your daughter! Lying on the floor at my feet, in the center of the circle, wrapped in a deep purple blanket, was my daughter. She was the most beautiful creature I had ever laid eyes upon. But I had no love for her. I knew I was supposed to love her. I remembered wanting to love her before the spell. But I didn't. The only feeling I had was the desire to protect her. But I didn't love my own daughter. I felt empty and alone in a sea of darkness. What will you name her? Do you know? Lucinda asked as I picked up my daughter for the first time and looked into her beautiful eyes. Her name is Aurora, for she is my shining light in the darkness. Thank you so much for listening. Remember, like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that notification bell to keep up to date on all the new magic. Have a magical day.